Hi everyone, it's me, Teresa Parin. Welcome back. I want to discuss with you AVCT today because there was an 8K filing, which you probably were alerted to due to the sell-off that happened, but I'm not quite sure why people sold. Yes, there was dilution with this, but it got rid of the warrants that we would have dealt with at $1 um, and the other ones as well, but in advance. And in addition, guys, um, it was very bullish if you understood or thought about why they were doing this. So I want to discuss the 8K filing with you, um, the dilution that it brings, but then I'm going to do a separate video too um, regarding my thoughts on AVCT and some other things that I saw that are very bullish. I just want to divide it up because I don't want it to be too long. So let's start with the 8K Hudson Bay and the warrants and what this has done. Okay, guys, so this is the cover page that you probably saw if you went to look at what happened. And essentially, it says that um, the company agreed to acquire the existing warrants that they had in the notes um, for an aggregate of 92,799,632 shares of common stock. And they um, and collectively with the 7,200,368 shares of common stock into which the remaining principal amount of the convertible notes. Um, so essentially, this is going to pay off what they owe um, to Hudson Bay, which they needed to do going forward in order to um, be acquired. OK, so that's why I'm saying this is very bullish, even though it's dilution. They paid off what they owe Hudson Bay by doing this, and they got rid of the warrants because um, the holders will know will have no further right to exercise the existing warrants, all of which will be canceled and terminated. Now, you have to go into this further to get the details, but there are certain parts that I want to read to you. It says, pursuant to the settlement agreement, the holders agreed they would not directly or indirectly sell or otherwise dispose of any new shares on any calendar day through and including September 30th, 2022, to the extent that any such sale or other disposition of shares would exceed 10% of the daily composite trading. So trading volume. So let's say the volume on this is 30 million. They can only exchange up to 10%, so 3 million. Now that's just an example depending on what um, the volume is on that day. Okay, now that does not apply if the price, well, let me continue reading so that it makes sense to you. Um, through the stock, through the, t the time of sale on any such date, excluding any sales of new shares at a price greater than 30 cents per share. So guys, if the price is over 30 cents a share, that doesn't apply. So it's going to be in Hudson Bay's best interest to keep the share price above 30 cents so that they can sell off these shares, okay? In addition, the company agreed not to issue or sell an offer to issue or sell any equity or equity-linked securities through the lien release date, as defined below, subject to certain exceptions in addition, the holders agreed to release any liens and securities interests granted to the holders in connection with the issuance of the convertible notes effective upon the earlier of the issuance of all the new shares or the final date on or after October 6, 2022, on which the company has issued all of the new shares as to which the holders have properly delivered a notice of of con um, excuse me a notice of conversion or notice of exercise as applicable on or before October 5th, 2022, such date, the lien release, the settlement agreement also contains mutual releases by each of the parties other than with respect to the right to enforce certain provisions of the settlement agreement. Okay, guys, so this is the main stuff, but in order to get the details and get down to the nitty gritty, 
you have like over 20 pages of reading to do. But don't worry, of course I did it. Um, so I highlighted a few of the things and don't worry, I only highlighted things on four of the pages. So most of it's legal jargon, which it's very difficult, I'll be honest, to get through, especially, um, you know, nobody really likes to do this stuff. And some of it's very hard to understand. So I do my best, but I can only tell you that I am not an expert, but I do my best to understand it and um, express it to you. If anyone feels that I'm missing something or wants to add something, please feel free to comment below. So the new conversion shares represent 100 million shares of common stock, provided that in compliance with the limitations of conversion of the notes and exercise of the warrants, the holder is prohibited from consummating such conversion and exercises simultaneously as a result of the 9.99% limitation on conversion set forth in the note and 9.99% limitation on exercise set forth in the warrants, respectively. So, basically they're getting 100 million shares when you add up the two figures I gave you for the note and for the warrants, okay? Which essentially nearly doubles the entire free float. But there's a reason they did this. And we'll get into that in a minute. So, um, issuant rights settlement of outstanding conversion notes. So, as set forth on the signature page of the stock to the holder in satisfaction of the outstanding conversion note, by deposit or withdrawal at custodian in accordance with the DTC instructions previously delivered to the company, the rights and upon exercise of such rights, the right shares, and such initial new conversion shares shall each be issued with restricted legal and shall be freely tradable by the holder. So that's just giving them the rights. So instead of having the warrants, guys, they are being issued basically like cashless shares in exchange for them because they have to get rid of this issue that they have hanging over them so that they can be acquired. That is why they're doing this. Now, more importantly, is this uh, leak out. During the period commencing on the date hereof and ending and including September 30th, the leak out period, the holder shall not in the aggregate collectively, directly or indirectly sell transfer, assign, pledge, or hypothecate, or hypothecate any new shares. Collectively, the restricted securities or subject any restricted securities to any hedging, short sale, derivative, put or call transactions that would result in the effect economic disposition of any restricted securities, any of the foregoing a disposition. At any given time on any calendar day, each date of the determination, each a measuring date. If after given effect to the disposition of such restricted securities, pursuant to which such determination is being made together with all prior dispositions of restricted securities by the holder, prior to such time, on such measuring date, such disposition of restricted securities in excess of 10% of the daily composite trading volume of the common stock through such time on the measuring date. So guys, essentially, I'm going to skip to the point. Um, oh, wait. And on the measure date shall not exceed 10% of the daily composite trading volume of the common stock as reported by Bloomberg. At that point, during such applicable measuring date, notwithstanding and foregoing, there shall be no restriction on any sales of restricted securities at a price greater than 30 cents per share each an excluded sale. An excluded sales shall not be included in the calculation of the daily composite trading volume of the common stock. So essentially guys, why I highlighted this and why I'm bringing it to your attention is because they can't in turn use these shares to short the stock to bring down the price. And um, they can't, they, if the price is under 30 cents, they cannot exchange more than 10% of the trading volume. But if the price is over 30 cents, they can exchange as much as they want. But I'm gonna tell you with Hudson Bay, I think they're getting rid of a big problem here. Hudson Bay notoriously shorts companies. So by them not being able to short them during this time, guess what's gonna to happen to that share price? Naturally, it should go up. 
So we'll see what happens. All right, now notice to allow exercise of right. If at any time while the rights remaining outstanding, the company shall declare a dividend or any other distribution on the common stock, the company shall have declared a special non-reoccurring cash dividend or redemption of the common stock. The company shall authorize the granting of all holders of the common stock rights or warrants to subscribe for, for or purchase any shares of capital stock of any class of any rights. The approval of any stockholder of the company shall be required in connection with any reclassification of the common stock, any consolidation or merger to which the party to which the company is a party, any sale or transfer of all or substantially all of the assets of the company or any compulsory share exchange whereby the common stock is converted into other securities cash or property, or E, the company shall authorize the voluntarily, voluntary or involuntary dissolution, liquidating or winding up of the affairs of the company. Then in each case, the company shall cause to be mailed to the holder at least 10 calendar days prior to the applicable record or effect date herein specified. Guys, essentially, I'm not going to keep reading this to you because I know it's boring as can be, but it goes on to talk about um, if there's a merger, a sale, a transfer, or share exchange. So guys, um, why would this be put in here and why would it be bolded out? It says, current report on Form 8K, the holders shall remain entitled to exercise their rights during the period commencing on the date of such notice to the effective date of the event triggering such notice, except as may otherwise be expressly set forth herein. So my main reason of bringing this paragraph to your attention, and actually, let me just go and give you the bottom. So down the bottom of this, where it says in witness whereof, where I have highlighted, you can see the outstanding principal amount of the note. So they owed um, Hudson Bay $1,100,000, okay? But because of the conversion of these shares and warrants, which equals 100... 100 million shares, sorry, my cat just scared me, which equals 100 million shares, they no longer owe Hudson Bay this money. It covers them for this note. And essentially they, once October 6th hits, Hudson Bay will have no more rights other than of course, if they still own some of the shares or whatever and they wanna sell them or whatever the case may be. But I think according to this too, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I think during this time, they have to sell off those cashless warrants. They have to sell these shares. So I don't even think it's an option for them to hold them at this point. Uh, I'm not sure about the note shares, but that's the way it seems to read to me. But either way, guys, it looks like Hudson Bay, um, all of all of that debt is gonna be paid off, which is huge, okay? So now they had to do this going forward because if they're gonna be acquired, this all of this mess that they've created with their funding and everything else, it needs to be cleaned up. And this is exactly what this is telling us. They're cleaning up this mess. So this is so bullish. And even though the float essentially doubles you know, from, I know the free float is like around 95 million or something, but it's 126 million plus or minus. Um, without these shares, it'll now be like 226 million shares. So that's what we're looking at. 226 million shares will likely be what it's divided by with whatever they receive from Microsoft or whoever buys them out. But guys, I have such bullish news to share with you regarding a tweet that came out from Candy. Um, and I think the writing's on the wall that it's, it's Microsoft. So I'm excited. I'll share that in another one with you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.